là-bas. I am Acquisition and Application Manager at Alviflow. Welcome to part two of our series of webinars about droplet-based macrophilics. Today's webinar will be about droplet size and uniformity control and detection. The presentation will be about 15 minutes, followed by 15 minutes Q&A session. The presenter of today is Remigius Vasilauskas, a Marie Curie postdoctoral fellow at Alviflow. The webinar will be recorded, so the replay and the PDF version of the webinar will be available next week on our website. So, Remis, you can now start the presentation. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Remigius and I will show my presentation, Droplet Size Uniformity and Control and Detection. So, first few words about the company. So, Elgaflow is doing a lot of R&D. She's pre preparing a lot of uh, uh, packs for you to enjoy. So for example, if you if you want if you if you're just starting with microfluidics, uh, a lot of packs are ready to to buy. Also, Elveflow is is very active in writing projects, different projects. So if you want an industrial partner for H2020 or other projects, Elveflow will be your partner. So it's enough about company. Let's go to the presentation of scientific things. So for production of emulsions. So one of the easiest way and the most efficient way to produce, produce emulsions is to mix just, for example, two miscible liquids like water and oil and stir them. So you, you will be producing droplets. The droplets will be produced very poly dispersed. So you can see here, very different uh, sizes. It's very nice art. However, if you want to do something with them, it's quite tricky. So we need to do poly mono dispersed droplets. So, and why do we need to control the droplet size and do them uniformly? So for example, for food pharmacy, if we take a very simple example, mayonnaise, so if you just mix water and oil, which is mayonnaise, just water and oil mixture. And if you have very different size droplets, they very easy uh, separate and your shelf life will be very short. So if you have the same size droplets, you can prolong the shelf life of the product. Uh, if you take pharmaceutical industry, for example, if you are encapsulating drugs in your droplets, then you can control much better the release of the drug. So if, you're, if your droplets are different sizes, then your release is different. So from the big droplets, it will be released faster. From small droplets, it will be released slower. And from big droplets, you can get side effects already for overdose. And from small droplets, you, they are far away from minimal level to, for the drug to work. So this is. So you have to control the droplet size for that. For cosmetics industries, it's similar thing. So you want to, for your cream to be released at the same time. And also if you are encapsulating cells, you want that your cells are encapsulated in the similar size droplets. And you know that uh, all the cells are uh, at the same condition. So none of them are starving and none of them producing fake results, which are due to the some different stress than the other cells. So one of the ways to produce monodispersed droplets is microfluidics. So if you have, uh, for example, here is a very simple example of microfluidics chip. We have glass, we have PDMS, and you have microfluidic channels in it, in which you run uh, your liquids and produce droplets, like it is shown here. So you produce dro droplet in a, in a manner by droplet by droplet, and uh, the speed of the droplet production can be from few hertz to kilohertz or even in megahertz sometimes. However, even this, in this way, you, the production is quite low and for industrial application, it's pretty hard to employ microfluidics. So we need to automatize the system or you need to parallelize it. So if we want to automatize, of course, we need to detect uh, the droplets. And there is few ways to do detection of the droplets. So first, uh, very simple. Of course, you can just photograph the image and do it yourself. Or if, you, if we go to automatization process, so first, 
was uh, shown by Zhang that it's possible to uh, automatize this process after you take the videos or during the process. You take the videos and the software can recognize the droplets and then you can it, the software can calculate the frequency, droplet size, and other things. However, with this software, is the problem is that you have to take very good videos, and if they are not very good, the software cannot recognize which is the droplet, which is side of the channels. And it, it can work only at uh, low frequencies. This is quite big limitation. So then it was introduced another method, which is electrical droplet detection. So you can run your droplets over the electrical contacts and you can detect them by physical or electrical parameters. However, you need to integrate into your chip all the electrical parameters, electrical stuff, which you, which change the, the price, will increase as the price of the chip and makes it very complicated. So this is not an optical method. And then optical methods were also introduced, one by Crawford. Uh, in 2017, he showed that it's possible to use optical methods and artificial intelligence for the droplet size regulation. So first he has optical system which can detect the droplets, so measure where is the beginning and where is the end of the droplet. Then it's, uh, when the droplet is detected, it is photographed and with the artificial intelligence, the droplet size is analyzed, the size frequency, and then it's with the feedback loop, it sends the signal back and it can control the droplet size. It is, the problem with this is that the system starts to be very complicated and it's quite limited speed. Even though the results are very good, if you compare a syringe pumps here, how the droplet size changes and the pressure pumps and also pressure pump with feedback, with feedback here in the green line, you can see that the droplet size changes very little. But the limitation of speed, which is 200 droplets per second with the normal camera, or up to 1000 droplets per second with special cameras, the speed is not optimal. We wanted to solve these problems by giving us other solution. So the goal of the project was to produce very monodispersal motions at a very high rates at 10 kilohertz or higher, uh, production of large quantities of the droplets. And of course, the system should, should be automatic that you, the person should not be sitting at it and uh, checking everything. And it should be a commercial system, meaning that uh, anybody could buy it and apply it into the workflow. So the working principle of the system is quite simple. So you have emission and detection, you emit the light, excitation light through the optical cables, it hits the droplet sites and you collect the fluorescent light, which you analyze. So you analyze with a computer special software and then with the you send the feedback loop back to the pump pressure pump to change the, the pressure and to check if the, and to change the droplet size if it's needed. So if you can, if you see here, so droplet generation is being made in the chip. So you can use more or less any chip, it's not limited. So liquids are put into the chip using a pressure controller. And then we have droplet controller itself, which is two, two optical lines. One is just the illumination of the droplets to see them and to be able to calibrate the system. And the second one is for the detection. So you illuminate with the excitation light and then you collect the fluorescent light. In the new computer, you can see all the peaks for the droplets and you can change parameters. So the software looks like this. Here you can observe droplets. So here it's, it's a droplet. So in the live view, you can see them. Observe the peaks for every droplet. If you, if you see some, not good things, you can always change that. Monitor frequency of the droplet so you can see how, how it changes the frequency with the time. Monitor the droplet size and get all the statistics 
uh, change PAG parameters. So if you're not happy with what's going on with the, with the system, if it's too slow or too fast reacting, you can always change the PAG parameters and also turn on and off the droplet regulation. Of course, we, we done some tests with the system and we compare syringe pound, pressure pound and pressure pound with the feedback and pressure uh, syringe pumps. If we just start them and st start to do droplets, you can see that the, the variation in the droplet size is really big. Here's the black line for the syringe pump. And this is not an optimal system. So then we try to stabilize the pressure pump, the syringe pump, sorry, and waited for like two hours to the, for the syringe pump to stabilize. And you can see here the red line is already much, much better. But uh, not everyone can wait for two hours until the pump will be stabilized and it will produce better droplets. Especially when in a lot of labs, the droplet production is just like 30 to 50 minutes. So this is not very good. If we compare with the pressure pump without any feedback loop, we can see if the droplet size variation is quite it's minimal here in the green line but it's still with the time it changes so if you're working for a long time if you're collecting droplets for two three five hours you will see that the droplet size will be changing and if we take check the blue line where is uh, the pressure pump with the feedback it's going for it's very stable going for several hours no no changes and in this way you can produce droplets for a very long time also, I wanted to show you a kind of failed experiment for a lot of uh, other system, but our system still was working. So here is an uh, example of uh, quite at, at quite low frequencies. We start at 700 uh, uh, hertz droplet production. This is blue line. And we start at 63 microns droplet size. Then we turn on uh, the feedback system. It goes to 65 micrometer droplets. And here at this point, the chip is partially clogged. So there is still liquids going, but, the, but you can see the frequency of the droplets drops significantly up to 100 Hertz. But the droplet size is being kept by the feedback system quite uniform. Of course, it's not so uniform as it was before, but it's still the system struggles, but it works nicely. So also we noticed that uh, a lot of people are working not only with the droplets, but also with the bubbles. So if we look by, with our eyes, the difference between bubbles and droplets is, is very minimal, but for the system, the, the difference is great. So we have modified to detect the bubbles also. So it's more or less the same system. Just instead of fluorescence here, we are collecting reflect, reflected light and we don't have filters for the fluorescent light. All other systems uh, parts are the same. And uh, because the bubbles have much better reflection compared to the droplets, we can de detect them much better. So the possible application, of course, of the system is so called flow droplet makers. So if you want to automatize and you want to produce big amounts of droplets, you have to do it in parallel. And co-flows droplet makers are nice because all of the channels are influenced by each other. So if, if one channel is clogged, the droplet size in the other channels will be changing. So if you have automatic regulation, the automatic regulation will compensate for the clogged channel always. So you can produce in this way monodispersed emulsions. Also, you can use uh, to produce hydrogel. So if you're working with uh, cell encapsulation, this is very needed. You can also produce other microparticles, for example, for drug encapsulation. Also, you can reverse the system. So if you assume that your droplets are the same, you can measure fluorescent intensity detection. So if you're encapsulating cells and your cells are producing some material which is fluorescent, you can uh, check which uh, cells are producing more of the stuff that you need. And then you can sort the cells and collect this. Stuff. And also, we are not doing just uh, theoretical work. We have done uh, practical work. So we have we created already a prototype, which consists of a pressure pump here, a microchip holder, which is 
very nice chip holder where you can put almost any chip which is just transparent to the light. So we are not limited to specific chips. Also, it consists of the microscope that you can observe your droplets being produced, a signal detector and illumination, and of course, computer to have a bit, a bit all the software and feedback loop. And at the moment, we are looking for beta testers. So if you want to become one, please contact us directly with our Elveflow or me directly, and we can talk about become, for you becoming a beta tester. As, and also, I want to acknowledge that this work was supported by European Union Marie Curie project, and also a lot of stuff was done in LVC's Microfluidic Innovation Center, and also for my psychological stuff to, to work better. Always my job was helping me a lot. And thank you very much for listening. So thank you very much, really great presentation. I would like to remind you that next week would be our final uh, webinar of our series of droplet based microfluidics. So now it is time to start the Q&A session with uh, Remis, of course, and our technical specialist, Robin Oliveres. Uh, to ask questions, please use the Zoom chat box. We will try to answer as many questions as possible. And should you have any additional questions, uh, feel free to shoot us an email at contact at lbflow.com. Thank you, Sri. So, uh, first question. Uh, may I know whether the fail experiment was with the developed fluorescence detection technique? Yes, so it's, it's not failed experiment, it's a quoted, quote failed experiment because our system was working and uh, this, it was the, controlling the droplets out. So yes, it is our technique. Okay, sure. uh, how fast is the feedback control loop uh, time elapsed between the droplet detection and the flow connection? So I guess the feedback between yeah, when you... Yes, so, so the system can work, as we mentioned, at uh, 10 kilohertz. So 10,000 droplets per second it can regulate. Um, okay, same question. May I know uh, the software used by this one? Yes, so there was a link uh, in this. When you get a PDF, you can check the link and you can go there directly and download it. It's, it is a free software which you can use and try. Do you surface treat uh, your device in a specific manner to generate droplets? Do you actually surface treat your, your chip when... Uh... Yeah, yeah, so this is standard chip preparation for the water and oil droplets. You usually make the chip hydrophobic. And for the bubbles, uh, you can use hydrophobic or hydrophilic chip. That, uh, for the simple experiment, that doesn't matter. Thanks. Uh, do you have any future project in droplets microfluidics? So uh, that's a very broad question. Being fully honest, I'm not aware of any ongoing project on the topic, but uh, please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions around this. Uh, we will get back to you with more information on the topic. Uh, next question from uh, Ambrish. Uh, can we use paper-based microfluidics for detection of soil nutrient in any mobile app? So this is kind of off topic here. Yeah. Uh, we will uh, get, you can contact us and we'll get back to you on this separate topic uh, later on. Um, again, a question from uh, Krishnalas. Uh, what is the minimum droplet size that was achieved? can be achieved with the system. Uh, if you mean to, to being detected with the, the system, so it, you can work up to 10 micrometers droplet, but it's more not the droplet size, but the, the concentration of, of the fluorescent agent, which is much more important. In a general, more, in a more general fashion, uh, you, you can basically generate droplets that are even smaller than this, but then the limitation is going to be on the detection side. You can do, FYI, for your information, you can go down to a few micrometer in terms of droplet size. What is it done with the droplets whose size are under parameters? Are they redirected to another channel? No, we are not doing anything with these droplets. We are just not detecting them. So we can see with the microscope, but if they are not detected, we are not, we are not sorting the droplets at the moment. It, yeah. It's just a feedback loop, not a sorting system yes. for now. Yes. A uh, question from Adam. Uh, how quickly did the detection system observe the change in droplet size when the fluid flow rate changes? 
Yes, yeah, so it's it's as I said, it's it can work up to ten kilohertz, so it's it's very fast. It it reacts very fast. The system itself, the pump is a little bit slower, uh, but it's in millisecond range. For you yeah. to know, guys, uh, at the flow we at, as uh, Remy stated before, uh, at the flow we're using a pressure-driven flow control, which is the fastest uh, response time. A flow control system in microfluidics and we actually offer the fastest pump available pressure control available right now uh, and our response time is is around 35 milliseconds so that's kind of like the limitation here in the feedback loop regulation um question from salomao uh, how do you characterize the droplet size online and offline and which is the standard deviation for the mono dispersed droplets so online meaning life probably so we characterize droplet size by by the fluorescent peak uh, and offline you just photograph and measure them probably <laughs> as if i understood correctly the question and uh, standard deviation so usually when you talk about droplets you are measuring uh, cv coefficient of variation which is typically below 1%. And if you are working with, the, with PAB parameters, you can go below 0.2%. All right. A question from uh, Jose. Oh. Can your solution be complemented with a droplet sorter to redirect the current droplet size through different channels? Um, yes, I think it, it can be done. To be fully honest, uh, we have. We have been working on this kind of project with a couple of our users. Uh, this is definitely doable. Now, coupling the two systems together is a slightly different story. Uh, there are many different uh, detection methods that can be used for sorting. Uh, then it's really, uh, it's really system dependent and uh, you can contact us to know more and we can uh, further develop this question if you're interested. Uh, one more question from Krishna Das. Uh, may I know whether the fluorescence is being detected by fluorescence particle, which is mixed with the droplet? If so, what is the size of those beads? So usually we are using just the fluorescent dye diluted in the in the droplets, but probably we can use also the particles. But we haven't done the, these experiments yet. So if you are interested, please contact and we can do collaboration to. To, to know more. Awesome. Uh, well, so thank you guys for your time. Thank you very much. And uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to us and uh, see you next week, hopefully.